I believe there are four versions of each individual. Who I think I am, how I think others see me, how they actually see me, and how I want them to see me. In 2002, in Dhaka, Bangladesh, where I'm from, in one of the top reputed high school, I was a no one. Others saw me as someone that can be bullied and easily made fun of. That kept me in a shell. Funny thing is, I was fine with that. I was ranked 47 out of 56 students. I was okay with that as well. Then one Tuesday, I was sitting in the fifth row in my classroom. I looked over three rows and saw one of my best mates sitting in the first row having a good laugh with one of my few other mates. He was in the first row because he was ranked ninth. And it struck me, we did the same exact activities. We were both in basketball team, we were both debating club, we were both in the book clubs, we were both librarians, and he had academic excellence. If he can do it, why can't I? That was the very first day that I said yes. That yes, I can change. I can see the change in myself if I want to make the change. And with that new motto of self-prosperity, I got obsessed with my own personal growth and I catapulted myself to the second row within two years, becoming 17 out of 56 students. And within three years, I aced eight of my 11 exams. And that enthusiasm led me to apply for the youth exchange study programs and I found myself in Gilbert, Arizona, smack middle middle of a parking lot, holding a sponge in my hand and a water hose in my left hand. I was at a car wash. How did I get here? I mean, to my collective knowledge, all I know about car wash is uh, it's done by cheerleaders in bikinis. I'm not a cheerleader. I don't think I'm going to look good in bikinis either. I was doing that car wash to help my fellow high school students so they can go to South America and build houses for disadvantaged communities. That made me wonder, America being one of the leading countries in the world, having so much success, how are they so, so prosperous when they're helping other people and not focusing on self-prosperity? That struck me. I failed my new motto. I found my purpose to live for others. With that new motto and enthusiasm, I was all fired up and I came to Bangladesh, to Dhaka, and joined the YES alumni with double digit YES alumni and started working on my first event. My first event was to do a tree plantation. I mean, who doesn't love trees? I love trees. I called the place, I set the date, I got cute little trees to plant, invited all the alumni, showed up at the event, and no one was there. No alumni showed up. It's like, okay, that's fine. I can plant 25 trees on my own, no problem. So I shook things up and started working on my second event, coloring books with kids with autism. Called up a place, set the date, got the coloring books, got all the colors, invited the alumni, Went to the place, saw all the parents, very excited to drop the kids off, saw the spark in the kid's eye, so happy to do color books on that day. Only one alumni showed up. I can plant 25 trees, but I can't color 30 books on my own and help him from help from another alumni. Then I did a third event, fourth event, fifth event, and still no one showed up. All my other friends were in university we're getting educated, they're gonna get a good job, they're following their path of success. Am I gonna be left behind? I feel I was failing in for alumni. I was failing in life, and that scared me. And that fear not only led me to leave, yes, alumni Bangladesh, but it made me leave the country all the way to London, England. I washed my hands off, yes, alumni, for good. Six months later, I get a phone call from one of the alumnus from Bangladesh. Uh, hi, is this, is this uh, Rubaiyath? Uh, I'm an alumnus from Bangladesh and uh, I just got back and uh, I was looking at all the events that you did, I mean, you, you, you tried to do last year. 
And I was just hoping that if you could help me uh, with organizing one of the events. A warm flow of blood just went from my heart to all throughout my body. Even to thinking about it and talking about it right now, all the hair on my back just went poof. I threw a stone in the pond and then I thought it sank. I believed I had failed. But that stone just went deep and created its first wave. And now, after nine years, that has created two, 10, 40, 50 waves. At an event now, we have 50 S alumni. Maybe the stone I threw in the pond wasn't a pond, maybe it was an ocean. Maybe just taking a bit longer to see all the waves, it hasn't come to the shore yet. As human being, we hate chronic things, we love endings. If we don't see a quick change, quick result, we panic, we get scared, we're afraid. And that fear made me feel like I have fallen, and I've fallen in a deep well. I picture myself as young Bruce Wayne from Batman Begins, <laughs> that who has just fallen in a well. I see my father wasting down Thomas Wayne, lending his hand out to me and saying, and why do we fall, Bruce? So we can pick ourselves up. My superhero, my dad, left me and left the world 36 days ago. 36 days ago, I went to Bangladesh for his funeral. I had his phone in my hand, and I started getting calls from people that I've never heard of. Rubaiyat, if it wasn't you for dad, my, both of my kids would have never gone to engineering school. I'm so sorry you lost your father, but if it wasn't your father, I wouldn't have a job after I lost my hand and my family would starve. I've been living away from Bangladesh for not more than nine years now. I speak to my dad every single day. Never, not even once, he told me of these things. He hid his true identity behind the mask. He was my superhero, the true superhero. I felt my calling of being a superhero and it pulled my cape out of living for others, helping others. Superman or Batman, they're not there so they can get things in return when they help people. They're there just to help. They're wishing for nothing in return. I'm a system engineer by profession and I look at the bigger picture. So I would like you to close your eyes and imagine looking at Earth from the moon. Imagine looking at it and we're closing in slowly and slowly. We don't see six billion peoples. We see six billion superheroes helping one another, living for one another, impacting the world, changing the world that we see now. Thank you.